Okay, a very good day to everyone. Alright, here we will meet again and I'm going to continue with my lesson. So we will continue with Unit 6, Crime. And now we are focusing on the listening skill. Alright, before we start, I would like to share with you our learning objective for today's lesson. So by the end of the lesson, you will be able to recognize attitudes or opinions of speakers in seven different situations about crimes by listening for similar keywords underlined in the questions and answer options and the tone used by the speakers in order to choose the correct answers in Activity 3. And also, you will be able to guess the meaning of unfamiliar words in six short recordings from clues provided by other words in the sentences provided and also from the words used in the recordings in Activities 1 and 2. Okay, now is the first activity for your listening. You may refer to your textbook, page 76. Read the instructions carefully. And later you will hear six short recordings. So before I play the audio, you have to read the instruction and the questions as well from number one until number six. So the instruction is listen to these speakers and circle the correct answers. So there are six sentences there. You may guess the meaning of words that you do not understand based on other clues in the sentence and later in the recording. So now, it's time for you to listen to the recording and choose your answer. I hope you will be able to underline the correct answers. Here is the recording. Unit 6. Listening. Exercise 1. 1. He deserves the death penalty. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Two. I'm sure he's been arrested. Three. He must have been at least 1.8 metres tall. Four. Thanks for reassuring me. Five. I have my doubts about her innocence. Six. I think his coat was black, but I couldn't swear to it. Okay, that's it. All right, so I will give you about one minute or two minutes to underline your answers, or maybe you can write down somewhere to state your answers before I share the answers with you. Alright, now let's check your answers. The first one. The woman thinks the man is being... What is, the, what is your answer? Yes, the correct answer is too harsh. Number two. The answer is... Is. The man is certain that the criminal has been arrested. And number three. The answer is... More. He was 1.8 meter tall or more. 
Number four, the answer is the woman now feels karma. And number five, the answer is the man is not sure that the girl is innocent. And finally, the answer for number six is the man says the coat was possibly black. So what do you get? Do you able to get all correct? If so, congratulations. If not, don't give up yet. You still have another task to practice. Now we move on to another task. Alright, this is activity 2 also taken from the same page in your textbook. Read the instruction of activity 2. Now listen again and use the phrase Use the phrases you hear to help you complete these alternative ways of seeing things. So you will listen to the same six short recordings from activity one again, but this time you must listen for phrases. That means as the first sentences in each pair. So now let's read the sentences and you must underline the parts in the first sentences that are going to be rephrased in the second sentence and to listen for these keywords or phrases. You can also guess the words or phrases that you think can complete the second sentence in each pair that will provide the same meaning as the first sentence. Before I play the audio, I give you time to read from sentence number one until number six. Okay, now let's listen to the recording and at the same time, you may write your answers there. I'm going to play the audio for the second time now. Unit six, listening. Exercise 1. 1. He deserves the death penalty. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? 2. I'm sure he's been arrested. 3. He must have been at least 1.8 metres tall. 4. Thanks for reassuring me. Five. I have my doubts about her innocence. Six. I think his coat was black, but I couldn't swear to it. So, are you able to write down the answers? How was it? Do you think it's too difficult for you to find the answers? Alright, let's check it out, the answers. Alright, this activity is quite confusing, right? Okay, never mind. It is your first trial for you with this kind of exercise. So, let's check it out the answers from number one until number six. The first one. All right, the answer is that's a bit easy, isn't it? Number two, I'm pretty sure he's still at school. Number three, we ran at least 50 meters. Number four, I'll speak to her and reassure her. And number five, 
I have my doubts about whether she can be trusted. And finally, number six, the answer is, I think the car was right, but I couldn't swear to it. Mm, so what say you about this task? Can you score well if this kind of question come out in your exam? Well, I am pretty sure that you will be able to do it again if you have more practices on this kind of listening activities. So we move to another task, which is your final task for listening. All right, this is your last task for listening. Firstly, let's read together the information in the download box there. All right, this type of task often requires you to work out how someone feels about a situation or a person. They will probably say something. They will probably say something connected to each of the answer options, so don't guess the answer too quickly. Listen carefully to the words and expressions they use to work out which of the answer options is actually correct. So you should know that it is important to understand how people feel when they are talking so that you can work this out from the words spoken and the tone of voice used. You can take note that the speakers will say something that is related to each of the answers option and you must listen carefully and do not try and guess the answers too quickly or you will make a mistake. Alright, now it's time for you to read the instruction of activity 3. You will hear people talking in seven different situations. For questions 1 to 7, choose the best answer, A, B, or C. And now, read the questions again, focusing on the option. You should underline keywords in the questions and answers that would help you listen to similar words in the recording in order to get the accurate answers. Remember, it is part of the strategy for listening. Please and please listen carefully for any rephrase words and pay attention to the tone of voice used by the speakers in order to figure out how they are feeling. So, let's read the question first. Question number one. You hear a police officer talking. What does he think about modern policing? Number two. You hear two people talking about an escaped criminal. What do they agree about? Number three. You hear a young woman talking. What does she feel about the way she, she is treated now? Number four, you hear two people talking about a crime. What does the woman think about the sentence that was given? Number five, you hear an old man telling a policewoman about a bugger. What is the old man sure about? Number six, you hear a policewoman talking to some TV and newspaper reporters. What is she doing? And number seven, you hear a man talking about an incident on his land. What is his opinion of the girl? So now, I will play the recording and you have to choose the correct answers. And later, I will provide you the link for you to type your answers for activity three only all right so let's hear the recording now exercise three one you hear a police officer talking i've been in the police force for 30 years and of course i've seen some big changes in that time there have always been risks in the job 
And nowadays, there are definitely more people carrying guns and knives than in the past. But we're better protected too, with special clothing and equipment. So I generally feel pretty safe. Computers have completely changed our job though. Without them, we wouldn't solve half the crimes we solve now. And what's nice is that they've actually reduced the number of reports we have to write. So paperwork has thankfully decreased, leaving us more time to catch criminals. Question number two. Two. You hear two people talking about an escaped criminal. Did you hear a criminal broke out of the prison near here the other day? Yes, I did, but they must have caught him and put him safely away again by now. I'm not sure about that. The police helicopter was out searching yesterday, which suggests he's still on the run. Do you know what he went to prison for? He could be dangerous. Well, I think most of the people in that prison are serving sentences for burglary, shoplifting, that kind of thing. I don't think they're too violent. Still, we should probably make sure we keep the doors and windows locked just in case until we hear they've caught him. Definitely. Question number three. Three. You hear a young woman talking. When I was at school, I was always getting into trouble, usually for vandalism and shoplifting, but once for arson as well. I was too young to go to prison. So I had to do community service many times. I know I was difficult to put up with, and I'm not surprised nobody believed anything I said or trusted me with anything. The thing is, though, I did my time and I learnt my lesson. I'm not like that anymore. I'm a better person and much happier for it, but people still don't trust me. They ought to give me a second chance, but they don't. Four. You hear two people talking about a crime. You know that driver who drove onto the pavement and killed a woman and her baby? Yes, I remember. He was only sentenced to five years in prison. Can you believe it? He should have got a life sentence or the death penalty, if you ask me. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? I mean, it was awful, of course, but he didn't mean to kill them. I agree that five years is hardly adequate for causing the death of two innocent people, though. I'm sure they'll reconsider the sentence. I expect it will be increased to 15 or even 20 years, perhaps. Well, I certainly hope so. Five. You hear an old man telling a policewoman about a burglar. So, Mr Jones, could you tell me what the burglar looked like? He must have been at least 1.8 metres tall. Definitely around 185, I'd say. He spoke to me as well, you know. I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was quite polite, actually. He told me that if I kept still and quiet, he wouldn't have to tie me up. Or perhaps he said he wouldn't have to kill me. I forget now. Anyway, I'm still here. Did he have any particular accent? I think he was from Liverpool, but I may be wrong about that. Perhaps he was from the North West, but I couldn't swear to it. Six. You hear a policewoman talking to some TV and newspaper reporters. I can confirm that three murders have been committed in the city in the last two weeks. What I would like to do now is to ask people to remain calm and not to panic. The public have been extremely helpful in coming forward with information, and we have been able to build a very clear picture of the person we're looking for. We are doing everything we can to find this person and to get him safely locked up, and I'm confident that we are very close to getting a result. As soon as we have any further information, we will, of course, let you know. Seven. You hear a man talking about an incident on his land. 
People are always trespassing on my land, and it drives me mad. Last week, my farm manager accused a local girl of smoking in one of my sheds. He said he'd seen her in there with his own eyes, and so he'd caught her red-handed. She swears she's innocent, of course. She says it wasn't her and that she's never even been in there. I trust my manager completely, and he's convinced she's guilty of trespassing. But I do have my doubts. I know the girl's parents, and I can't imagine she'd be disrespectful of other people's property. It's difficult to prove either way. Okay, done. All right, that's the end of your activity three. So later I will provide the link below the description and you have to key in your answers together with your names and class as well. And let's check it out who can get all correct. All right, that's all kids. Thank you for watching and do not forget to click on the Google Form link at the description. And also, don't forget to type your answers for activity 3 only. The rest of the activities is for you to practice. Right, that's the end of the session. Hope to see you again. Take care and be safe everyone.